Cryptocurrencies are the rave in the financial world today, but how much do you know about them? There are about 1,000 cryptocurrencies in the world today, and it's very rare to hear about one ever being in trouble. There have been some instances where a cryptocurrency has been sued on the grounds of fraud and other financial mismanagement that costs investors an awful lot of money. Today, we will be looking at what will happen to XRP after the SEC lawsuit. If you're watching a video on this channel for the first time, hit the like and subscribe button to watch more videos like this one. The price of XRP cryptocurrency has taken quite the tumble, falling about 70% of its price levels, and it's unclear just how far it will still fall. This is not without good reason. The coin is having a really bad time following the lawsuit filed by the SEC against its parent company Ripple. Is this the first time this is happening? Against what some folks would say, XRP is not the first cryptocurrency to be sued by the SEC. There was a somewhat similar case filed against Telegram's blockchain earlier this year. The case was filed on the same grounds as this lawsuit against Ripple. It was founded based on the question of the blockchain's identity as a security or a crypto. This case is similar to that of Ripple, hence it would make sense to consider it, don't you think? The case ended with a ruling barring the launch of the Telegram Open Network blockchain. The cryptocurrency of the company is called Gram. Telegram planned to distribute Gram to trade on its TON platform, an action that met resistance from the SEC, who were deemed capable of proving that the blockchain's developers engaged in the sale of unregistered securities. The state of being a security is a little ambiguous, so I guess we'll give it a definition. Securities include a wide array of investments, such as stocks, bonds, notes, debentures, limited partnership interests, oil and gas interests, and investment contracts. Okay, so what makes crypto or any other thing a security? If an investment of money is made in a business with the expectation of a profit to come through the efforts of someone other than the investor, it's considered a security. Any organization selling this without due diligence to a certified government agency is deemed to be trading illegal securities. This may attract a heavy lawsuit, costing millions against such an organization. What is not considered to be a security? If an object is confirmed to be a genuine currency, then regulatory bodies do not get to take a sniff at it as security. Other things that cannot be referred to as a security include checks, certified or not, drafts, bills of exchange, or a bank letter of credit, a note or other evidence of indebtedness issued in a mercantile or consumer, rather than an investment. Transaction, an interest in a deposit account with a bank or a savings and loan association, an insurance or endowment policy or annuity contract under which an insurance company promises to pay money either in a lump sum or periodically for life or for some other specified period. How to identify an illegal security? The signs of a security lie in their potential benefits. They are represented as safe investments. They are represented as no-risk investments. They are represented as guaranteed return investments or they offer returns on investment that are greater than the prevailing market. Crypto that seems to offer more benefits than is necessary also falls in this category. In case crypto is truly a security, it's naturally expected that it would be registered with the SEC. SEC is the standard organization that checkmates issues relating to malpractices of the sort. According to the 1933 Securities Act, all securities need to be registered before a sale or any form of exchange. This move was deployed then to deal with a number of irregularities on the farm. Once a business registers securities, they become more liquid, which enables investors to sell the shares more easily. With the opportunity to sell the stock, the registration rights are considered a potential selling point, especially for those investors who hold a pessimistic view of how the stock price is going to change. In this case, crypto that eventually gets registered as a security is transformed from its state as a digital currency to a piece of the company's share. The meaning of this goes deeper than anything. First, it means the crypto will get delisted by literally all the exchanges in the crypto market. Anyone deemed guilty of trading the security might have to face the consequences. In the case of Telegram, they used investment contracts in 2018 to launch the program. And trading of the Grand Crypto was due to launch in 2020 before the SEC sued. The investment contracts used by Telegram were indeed, but the loophole they explored was in that they were meant to be used to only raise money from sophisticated private investors. This, however, means they in no way fall under the SEC requirements and are thus exempted from registration. It would be different if they were offered directly to the public. They were to be widely circulated and traded in a decentralized fashion, just like the digital Bitcoin, which the SEC regards as a commodity and not a security. The agreements backing the blockchain were acknowledged as securities, but it shouldn't extend to the crypto itself, which doesn't exist yet and will be used, bought and sold by the public.
following the launch of the Ton blockchain. The case highlights a critical challenge for blockchain developers. For the blockchain industry to grow, developers need to be able to raise capital by promising cryptocurrency. But the SEC has never provided clear guidance on when digital assets should be considered securities. Hence, there's no legal ground for the SEC to sue a cryptocurrency. This makes an awful lot of sense, right? Technically, the investment of money in a cryptocurrency utilized by members of a decentralized community connected via a blockchain technology, which itself is administered by this community of users rather than by a common enterprise, is not likely to be deemed a security. This reflects the problem facing Ripple XRP, with the SEC exploring the possibility that Ripple Inc., the mother company of XRP crypto, is heavily involved in the affairs of XRP as a cryptocurrency, thus insinuating that their involvement means the cryptocurrency should be treated as a security. One of the things the SEC looked at is the fact that about 100 billion worth of XRP has been pre-mined and only about 45 billion are in circulation. This meant that about 55 billion are held in reserve. The question of who holds the reserve is a cause for concern, as Ripple is supposed to be the custodian of the reserve. This makes it directly involved in the proliferation of the cryptocurrency. It was deemed similar to a security slash stock where the company holds onto a large portion of the stock or shares, pending the need for public offerings. This was deemed as a direct attack on all blockchains holding cryptocurrencies. The most endearing quality of all blockchains is that right at the start, they can give out free currencies to their users pending their launch. If cases like this keep popping up, it's going to deter blockchain developers from raising money in the US by pledging digital assets to investors. Without the offering, it will be difficult for developers to raise the funds necessary to facilitate the development of the cryptocurrency's features. If investors expect blockchain developers to make their investment profitable, the digital tokens that investors receive must be treated as securities, which can't be traded as freely as an ordinary currency. It's yet to be seen whether there is a way for developers to deal with startup investment offerings from subsequent trading of digital assets more convincingly than Telegram. Or maybe the SEC will adopt some form of the three-year haven that will allow new cryptocurrencies some time to become decentralized and widely circulated. Without this, it would be very hard for any cryptocurrency to thrive as a decentralized digital asset. The fate of XRP Given the unfortunate turn of events, the price of XRP first fell to 50% of its price of $0.70 to $0.35, before falling to $0.28 and now to $0.25. This was facilitated by the announcement of Coinbase, which happens to be a major exchange platform for cryptocurrencies. The position of Coinbase is understandable as their major reason for dropping XRP as a traded asset was deemed to be because the company is set to go public. If it is considered to be a platform for a cryptocurrency that could be security posing as a currency, it could mean adding more paperwork and thereby delaying its IPO. This would also mean that it had to find a way to allow its retail customers to buy and sell XRP. This, following the filing of the lawsuit that claimed Ripple has been selling it without registering or seeking an exemption for seven years, raising $1.3 billion in the process. The legal battle itself is just beginning, and it will take years to be settled especially with Ripple taking actions to lawyer up and defend itself. Coinbase is now the biggest exchange to act on XRP and could serve as a bellwether for other platforms. While other smaller exchanges like Bitstamp and OKCoin have already made plans to halt XRP trading and deposits for all US customers with both announcing their suspension in early January, exchanges that continue to list XRP without registering as a securities exchange with the SEC face potential consequences down the line, including possible enforcement actions. However, should Ripple prevail in its defense, these exchanges can likely relist XRP fairly easily. However, Ripple XRP has fired back at the SEC and announced that it will contest the charges levied against it, adding that the lawsuit has affected innocent XRP retail holders. The company accused the SEC of actually harming the community they're supposed to protect in an official response to the indictment of its top executives, as well as a separate civil lawsuit filed by the SEC for selling unlicensed securities. Ripple reportedly said that XRP has no connection whatsoever to Ripple. An attack on the cryptocurrency ultimately threatens millions of investors in the crypto. The company's response reflected the fact that this was more of a declaration of war against all cryptocurrencies in the United States. This was to buttress the initial cry that there is a danger for all cryptocurrencies, that the lack of clarity in the regulation of cryptocurrencies in the US would provide a loophole for future attacks on all cryptocurrencies. The bright side is that in the meantime, Ripple said it will continue to operate and support all products and customers in the U.S. and globally. The company added that the majority of their customers are not situated in the USA, and most of XRP trading volumes occur outside the U.S. The regulatory rules are much clearer in other jurisdictions, like the U.K., Japan, Switzerland, and Singapore. 
Ripple is counting on the change of leadership of the SEC, which is scheduled to follow the election of President Joe Biden in January, to further establish a clearer picture of the SEC on the crypto industry. Investors in XRP are implored to hold on to their coins and, if possible, buy more XRP pending the closure of the case, with the price dipping at close to $0.20. It might end sooner than expected, with Ripple coming out victorious after clear ground rules are established for the regulation and registration of cryptos become much more defined. That's all we have for today. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. Would you like us to provide more updates on the XRP lawsuit as it progresses? Drop your comments in the comment section below. Let us know what you think. While you're here, you can also watch our other videos addressing stocks and cryptocurrencies. See you next time.